Hello students, in this video we'll see the procedure for solving a cubic equation. If we're given a x cubed plus b x squared plus c x plus d equals zero, the first thing we want to do to solve the cubic equation is divide through by this a. So if we divide through by the a, we'll get x cubed plus b over a x squared plus c over a x plus d over a is equal to zero. So if the co lead coefficient is not equal to one, divide by it. If it's equal to zero, it's a quadratic equation, you can solve that. So we'll consider cubic equations whose lead coefficient of x cubed is equal to one. Then the first thing we'll do is, so let's relabel these terms over here. So I'll relabel these as saying this is x cubed plus a capital x squared plus b capital x plus c capital is equal to zero. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to shift. So our first step is to shift. And what will we do with our shift? We're going to let x be equal to y plus h. So h is going to be the first parameter of our problem. If we plug in x equals y plus h, what we'll get is the following. We'll have y plus h cubed plus a y plus h squared plus b y plus h plus c is equal to zero. Now I'll use the cubic formula on that first term, which I'll get y cubed plus 3y squared h plus 3y h squared plus h cubed plus a times y squared plus 2hy plus h squared plus by plus bh plus c is equal to zero. You might say, why did you do this? Why did you shift the equation? I shifted the equation so that I can choose a value of h. So I'm going to look at this term right here. That is a y squared in it. And I'm going to look at this term over here, this a times y squared. That's going to have a y squared in it. And then no other term has a y squared in it. So in other words, the coefficient of y squared is what? So I'm going to have a 3h plus a is the coefficient of y squared. And so now I'll choose h to be negative a over 3. So if we choose h to be negative a over 3, the y squareds in this equation will vanish. And we'll have a new equation. Our new equation for y will be a y cubed, y cubed. There's no y squared terms. There's going to be a there's going to be a combination of terms that have just a what? There's going to be a combination of terms that just have a y in them. And that combination of terms will depend on a over 3, right? So I'm just going to say that's a new a. I'll call it a tilde y plus b tilde is equal to 0. So by shifting the equation, I've eliminated the y squared term. If I can solve for y, I can, if I, can, if I know what y is, then I'll be able to find what x is. So now I'm going to solve the equation for y. The next phase, what we're going to do is we're going to scale the equation. So phase 2 is to scale the equation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let y be equal to lambda times z, so a multiple of z. If I do that, I'm going to have a lambda cubed z cubed plus a tilde lambda z plus b tilde is equal to 0, which is the same thing as saying z cubed plus a tilde lambda to the negative 2 z plus b tilde lambda to the negative 3 is equal to 0 by multiplying by lambda to the negative third power. Now I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose lambda. Choose lambda such that what? Such that a tilde lambda to the negative 2 is equal to negative 3. Now, this equation will most likely involve complex numbers because this is akin to saying that lambda squared is equal to a tilde over negative 3. So that may be positive, it might be negative, but I can always find plus or minus square root of any number as long as I'm allowed to use i's. So I can find a complex number, perhaps, 
lambda so that this equation is satisfied in, la in a tilde lambda negative 2 is equal to negative 3. That will turn our equation into another equation, which looks like this, which looks like z cubed minus 3z plus some other new parameter in my problem, which depends on lambda and b tilde, right? And that depends on h and a. So there's going to be a new parameter called, let's call it b tilde tilde, is equal to 0. So now I've reduced my cubic equation to an equation of this form. And my final step is to use a transformation. And this transformation is called the Cobe transformation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let z be zeta plus zeta to the negative 1. If I can find zeta, I can find z. If I can find z, I can find y. And if I can find y, I can find x. Great. So let's do this Cobe transformation and see what happens. Well, I'm going to have what? We're going to have zeta plus zeta inverse cubed minus 3 zeta plus zeta inverse plus b tilde tilde is equal to 0. We'll use the cubic formula. So this will be zeta cubed plus 3. And then zeta squared times zeta inverse is going to be just a zeta. And then a 3 zeta times zeta inverse squared is going to be a zeta inverse. And then plus zeta to the negative 3 minus 3 zeta minus 3 zeta inverse plus b tilde tilde is equal to 0. Now we're in great shape. Because if we look over here, I have a 3 zeta and a minus 3 zeta, a 3 zeta inverse, and a negative 3 zeta inverse. So all the zetas and zeta inverses cancel. And we're left with this new equation. This new equation is zeta cubed plus zeta to the negative 3 plus b tilde tilde is equal to 0, which is the same as zeta to the 6th power by multiplying by zeta cubed, plus b tilde tilde zeta what? Zeta to the 3rd power plus 1 is equal to 0. And now, this is a quadratic equation in zeta cubed. So this equation over here is quadratic in zeta cubed. And we can solve quadratics. So even though we haven't written down an explicit formula, this procedure tells us how to solve cubic equations very quickly. right? What we have here is we shift the variable x to get rid of the what, y squared term. Then we scale the variable y to turn the coefficient of y into negative 3. Then we per perform this Cobe transformation to get rid of the what? To get rid of the middle terms in my cubic expansion. That turns the problem into a sixth order polynomial equation. And that sixth order polynomial equation is quadratic and zeta cubed. We can solve for zeta cubed using the quadratic formula, find the third roots of zeta. Once we have zeta, we can plug it into this equation and find z. Once we have z, we can find y. Once we have y, we can find x, and that will solve the equation. Now, we've over, we put more parameters into the problem than there were originally. So we'll have to check the answers that we get to make sure that they are, in fact, roots, and that, that we get, make sure we don't get multiple repeated roots. And so that will happen when you do problems like this. Thank you very much.